I'm going away, I'm gonna go away purposefully in front of everyone in my physical form and go into heaven so that you stop trying to follow me and start following the one that I'm sending. The Holy Ghost is God in the earth today, and you walk with him by saying words. My name is Olivia Hemstrott. Thank you for joining us. If this is your first time here, make sure you subscribe. If this isn't your first time here and these messages are a blessing to you, consider becoming a partner with us. We need to believe things about the Holy Ghost that no one else is actively believing. Now, if we do that, what happens? we have a different destination that people that aren't believing that or actively believing that can't go to because that's how we get places is through belief don't we it's by what we believe is where we get to with the tithe if you believe in the tithe and you tithe where do you get to the blessing of the tithe if you believe in healing right what do you get to the blessing of healing so I mean that's the way it is with God's Word we're not going outside God's Word so you have to actively believe things about the Spirit that no one else is believing right now does that make sense Jesus said in John so we won't turn there John 6 29 says this is the work that you believe on on is different than in I believe in the Holy Ghost but do you believe on him and on him in the capacity that he is today which is what God in the earth today if you're actively believing that God the Holy Ghost is God the only God in the earth today then you're doing something believing something that almost no one else believes right now I hope you don't have a problem with that but what's that gonna get you it's gonna get you someplace that other people can't go because they're not actively believing does this make sense Luke chapter 24 let's look at verse 36 and as they thus spake Jesus himself say Jesus himself Jesus himself, Jesus himself. say Jesus, Jesus. Himself. himself who's this talking about Jesus. the spirit of Jesus the concept of Jesus say the concept of Jesus <laughs> the doctrine of Jesus no Jesus himself what do you do he stood in their midst who stood in their midst the doctrine the spirit of the concept no Jesus himself and you go like what's the point here you'll get the point in a minute Jesus himself stood in the midst of them and saith unto them peace be unto you but they were terrified and frightened and and supposed that they had seen a spirit here's the the carnal physical disciples apostles Jesus appears to them in their midst and they were frightened afeared because they thought they'd seen a spirit why would they think that because that's you know it's just not possible here's a guy raised from the dead are you right 38 and he said unto them why are you troubled and why do your thoughts arise uh, and why do thoughts arise in your hearts behold my hands and my feet that is that it is I myself handle me and see for a spirit are you here yeah. a spirit hath not flesh and bones as you see me have then he goes on to Thomas and says you know later he says put your finger right so here's Jesus himself say Jesus himself, Jesus himself. appears to them himself not a spirit makes it definite that he's not a spirit it's Jesus himself flesh and bone probably not didn't say blood because the blood was spilt on the earth on the cross for our redemption and then he took some of it and put it on the, the heavenly altar so he used it that's that's a whole nother message but I want you to get this point that this is Jesus himself Jesus himself is flesh and bone here let's read on here behold my hands this is verse 39 behold my hands and my feet that it is I myself handle me and see for a spirit hath not flesh and bones as you see me have and when he had thus spoken he showed them his hands and his feet and while they yet believed not for joy 
and wondered he said unto them have you not have you any meat he's gonna take it one step further you got anything to eat <laughs> and they gave him a piece of broiled fish say broiled fish, broiled fish. sounds good and some honeycomb so I guess and a piece of honeycomb so I guess how they had their broiled fish I guess in those days <laughs> broiled fish and honeycomb I'll have a side dish of honeycomb please and they gave it to a piece of broiled fish and a honeycomb and he took it and did eat it before them do spirits eat food no so this is Jesus himself right now what I'm trying to get you all of this is happening I'm gonna show you a couple more spaces all of this is happening pre they pre pre Jesus ascending Jesus rose from the dead what part of him rose from the dead his spirit no his physical body rose from the dead he's walking around for many days right so let's look at something else let's look at John oh let's go there we already we already talked about that you understand that but he's appearing to people various people all over the place here's first Corinthians see I'm amazed that you know when you think about it here's the one of the first instances and what did the disciples immediately do when they saw Jesus he's a spirit he's a spirit immediately with no no nothing he raised from the dead he appears to them uh, he tells them he's gonna raise from the dead raises physically from the dead shows back up eats some food and they're like it's a spirit why is that a problem because that's continued on to this very day it's it's just almost natural that people think that and then they get messed up first Corinthians 15 and let's look at verse 4 and that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the script scriptures and that he was seen of Cephas or Peter and then of the twelve right that's what we were just talking about and after that he was seen of above what 500 brethren at once so Jesus is still on the earth doing part of the ministry talking about the kingdom that's gonna come telling them to not leave Jerusalem we think he only said that once that was his message from that point on until he ascended right don't go wait for the Holy Ghost seen all of this pre-ascension let's look at Acts Acts chapter 1 let's look at verse 9 <clears throat> Acts chapter 1 verse 9 and when he had spoken these things while they beheld he was what taken up he who was taken up Jesus. he Jesus himself physical say physical Jesus. physical Jesus the person of Jesus traveled about was seen of at least of over 500 people at various times verse 2 says until the day in which he was taken up after that he threw the Holy Ghost had given commandments unto the apostle unto the Apostles whom he had chosen right so this is what he was doing during that span of time rose from the dead traveling about giving commandments by the Holy Ghost are you here yeah. verse 9 and when he had spoken these things while they beheld he was taken up and a cloud received him out of their sight out of their sight and while they looked steadfastly toward heaven as he went up behold two men stood by them in white apparel which also said you men of Galilee why stand ye gazing up into heaven this same Jesus which Jesus this physical this same Jesus we were talking about the one that was with them the one that is being physically physically taken up into a cloud right right before them all this same Jesus which is taken up from you into heaven where is same Jesus now same Jesus is in heaven this same Jesus shall so come in like manner as you have seen him go into heaven has that happened yet no. where is same Jesus no. so this causes a lot of problems with a lot of people's doctrine because they're talking about Jesus as a spirit which Jesus initially corrected them on and said no I'm going away I'm gonna go away 
purposefully in front of everyone in my physical form and go into heaven so that you stop trying to follow me and start following the one that I'm sending if you could sense the hairs raised on the back of people's heads as I say that all I'm doing is preaching what the Bible say why do you think Jesus made such a specific example out of this correcting them at every turn no I'm physical Jesus that's basically what he said hey I'm physical Jesus who's gonna return physical Jesus, physical Jesus. now let me ask you a question is that physical Jesus going to return at a specific time point in time when physical Jesus comes back it will be such and such a clock did physical Jesus leave it's funny it was you know I really haven't put those together but physical Jesus physical did physical Jesus leave at a specific point in time yes Acts chapter 1 so from the time that physical Jesus left until the time that physical Jesus comes back where is physical Jesus physical Je he's not here he's in heaven he's not here he's gone society life begins with the acknowledgement that Jesus left you not doctrinal Jesus not spiritual Jesus not conceptual Jesus physical Jesus left you why is that so important because if he do not go he do not send the another we've been trying to retain a relationship with physical Jesus in our imagination and try to add Holy Ghost somewhere around the back part every once in a while can't happen we have to believe things about the Holy Ghost that no one else is believing why because believing that about him will take us someplace that no one else is willing to go where is that I'm telling you only in this room of Holy Ghost worship can Jesus return who physical Jesus why is that because he has to come back the split second that he comes back he must have been away you can't come back from someplace that you weren't at in the first place so the church's position has to be that Jesus isn't here before Jesus can return is this too difficult am I making it difficult sometimes that happens I'm trying to clean up the mess let me ask this again is there a specific point in time when physical Jesus returns hasn't happened yet but it's a specific time so at even if we're just to go right up almost next to that time the 10 minutes before that was Jesus here no what's no. the place we have to be everybody wants Jesus to return but he can't return until we fully accept and acknowledge the fact that he's not here what does that do that opens up a whole room for the Holy Ghost to be who the Holy Ghost is supposed to be in the earth today and that is him dwelling in you the temple of God we'll get into this in a minute are you seeing this we're now in the age of Holy Ghost it's the Holy Ghost dispensation scriptures are weighted towards the Holy Ghost Holy Ghost Holy how he talks about Holy Ghost Holy Ghost because the Holy Ghost dispensation is the one we're in right and if we fully embrace what we're supposed to do we'll be able to fulfill everything we're called to fulfill are we going to be able to fulfill what we're called to fulfill if we keep these kind of squirrely ideas in our head and it's a bigger deal than maybe people think it is it's a bigger deal because we have to believe things about the Holy Ghost that other people are unwilling to believe and one of the reasons they're unwilling to believe it is because it messes up their doctrine of Jesus being with them did I get this across so we need to be willing to embrace others that come into believing this it's not like we're ah you don't believe that and I'm gonna tell you this but you don't believe well well when they see the truth they will begin to believe that's where we had to be I mean I've been pulling teeth for years now trying to get it trying to get it to go in this direction but don't hold your breath we need to be willing to believe we need to be willing to embrace other people coming in but don't hold your breath how long 
do you think you'd be holding your breath for the catholics to embrace the protestants right how long was that you'd be holding your breath for a few hundred years anyway right a long time i don't know how long you can hold your breath but it's not that long how about the baptists to receive the baptism of the holy ghost how long are you going to wait for that how long are you going to hold your breath well you'd be seeing jesus real quick how about even word of faith for pentecostal people which you know hey this is where i've been for most of my christian life how about them not just having the holy ghost as an additive believe me most of them believe you can get saved you can you know and then you can get filled. oh you're filled with the holy ghost oh good 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 it's like it's like an additive is that gonna work is that gonna is that what we need to be believing about the holy ghost are you here i'm just saying that that you're not gonna go into word of faith circles and get them to give up this part of their doctrine don't hold your breath the bible talks about coming outside the camp you have to go outside the camp to continue on with the things that the Holy Ghost is leading you to do and if you stay inside the camp you will be trapped in the doctrine that holds you bondage well we can't do that because we have to go on are you here only in this room of Holy Ghost worship fully embracing the Holy Ghost believing things about the Holy Ghost that nobody else is believing will Jesus physical Jesus return he can't come back to any other room and only in this room can we fulfill all that God's called us to fulfill you think you're gonna fulfill what God's called you to fulfill by holding on to some kind of doctrine that limits you it's like running a race with a you know a ball and a chain around your leg unless it's the ball and chain race you're probably not gonna win are you here Am I just irritating now I hope not maybe a little bit but sometimes you got to irritate things that are in there I mean this these kind of doctrines are what's been holding back you can't move on to where you need to go holding on to doctrines that limit you doesn't that make sense how about the doctrine that God's God's will to heal some people but you don't know who is that limiting do you know how many people believe that those are the sick people you got to come to the place where you believe according to the word that it's God's will to heal all people because you can't have faith otherwise right all right now don't hold your breath it's okay when people cross over we want people to cross over but if they don't I'm not holding my breath and waiting for them we got to continue to believe right okay and lots of times the Bible does talk about being without the camp separate yourself from among them and I'll receive you who would you rather people to receive you want people to receive you because your doctrine lines up with theirs or you want God to receive you we want God the Holy Ghost to receive us and the word for that would be approve right God approves something God doesn't approve of something God marginally approves of that but it's better if you go here all right let's see acts chapter 10 let's look at verse 34. peter opened his mouth and said of a truth i perceive that god and you're welcome to put in here because it really clarifies god who god the holy ghost is no respecter of persons but in every nation he that fears him him who the holy ghost and works righteousness is what accepted of him or approved of him other translations say that that's what the word literally means approved approved of him who approved of the holy ghost that's where we want to be i don't know if you want to be there but that's where i want to be is approved of the holy ghost i like it when you approve of me but i like it much better when the holy ghost approves of me and i've crossed that line i don't know how many times or somebody i don't approve but God approves I get to choose unfortunately or fortunate for me I've already made the choice a long time ago so it's a no-brainer that's why that look on my face goes because it's a no-brainer I go with God if God's saying this I gotta go here he's the one that's gonna be with me forever
are you here so let me read this again then Peter opened his mouth and said of a truth I perceive that God is no respecter of persons but in every nation he that fears him him who the Holy Ghost and works righteousness is accepted or approved of him he that fears God the Holy Ghost now what about what is fearing is reverencing is putting him in the place that he is supposed to be a lot of people and that's not third place that's not secondary he's God in the earth today so this is why it's so important we have to magnify and put in the proper place the Holy Ghost even Jesus did that in his ministry he said hey you, you can criticize me and call me names all you want criticize the Holy Ghost you got problems this is a pinnacle scripture right here if you can fear God and you got to know who he is remember even Jesus said that you don't know who you worship we know who we worship God is a spirit they that worship him must worship him in spirit and truth you got to fear him well how are you gonna fear somebody you don't know who it is or you have some kind of twisted idea of who it is I perceive that God is no respecter of persons but in every nation he that fears him and works righteousness is accepted with him what's the point here because we can go farther by actively believing things about the Holy Ghost that other people can't go to it's not even open to them you heard me talk about the room of Holy Ghost worship that there's things in this room there's angels in this room that don't have anything to do with people who don't worship the Holy Ghost how many people don't worship the Holy Ghost in the earth right now how many religious sects of people in Christianity don't worship the Holy Ghost or just give some kind of lip service maybe at the benediction are they fearing God and working righteousness no because they're they're confused about who God is Romans chapter 12 verse 1 and I beseech you therefore brethren by the mercies of God that you present your bodies a living sacrifice holy and acceptable unto who God the Holy Ghost exactly you get used to putting Holy Ghost in the place where you see God and Lord why because it's that's what we're dealing with why would we be dealing of with presenting our bodies holy to the Holy Ghost because he's holy and you are his temple whose temple are you what no you're not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost who is in you who's in you Holy Ghost whose temple are you Holy Ghost who's God the Holy Ghost hey Holy Ghost Holy Ghost Holy Ghost Holy Ghost Holy Ghost so that that was Jesus's message that's my message this is where the church has missed it we got to go here are you here sometimes I feel like I'm just yelling I beseech you therefore brethren by the mercies of God that you present your body a living sacrifice holy acceptable unto God which is your reasonable service now what if what if you don't do this verse of Scripture you gonna get the results of the Scripture no just like any other verse of Scripture you don't get it unless you do it so you got to present your body to who I dare say most people have never done this presented their body to who the government for service the Holy Ghost who's God in the earth today then it says which is your reasonable service that word reasonable means uh, reasonable service two words together means spiritual worship so your spirit this is how you do your what you do as a temple of God is by presenting your body to the Holy Ghost that's your spiritual worship you could also say that's fearing God if you're not doing that you're not fearing God the Holy Ghost but see you're gonna miss a lot of this because if you don't understand that when we're winning when we see God present your body to God you're not putting Holy Ghost who's God in the earth today there then you can't fulfill this verse of Scripture 
therefore you can't do what he says in verse 2 and be not conformed to this world but be you transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may present that you may prove what is that good acceptable and perfect will of God good acceptable and perfect so when we're talking about being approved of God the Holy Ghost there's a little approval there's more approval and then there's approval we've got to get to approval before physical Jesus can return we got to get to approval to fulfill everything we're called to fulfill we can't get there unless we first acknowledge that Jesus left us and present our bodies to the true and living God who's called the true and living God in the New Testament the Holy Ghost he says what no you're not your body's temples of the living God now, I was thinking about it the other day now if you go to a Baptist church and I've been to so many Baptist churches kind of brought up in there and you know God bless them I'm not saying that everything they say is wrong what I'm saying is I remember going there and almost every week you would hear about Jesus paying for your sins and receiving him almost every week have you been here except for maybe on Wednesday night where they would teach something about prayer or something else but the message always seemed to be the same and, I, and I'm only saying this because I was thinking about it when I go back and I look at the bulk of my messages especially recently they've all been Holy Ghost is God in the earth today why is that it's the same thing back then they were they had a message and they were trying to establish it in the body of Christ the new birth you must be born again for God so loved the world he sent his only begotten son John 3 16 right they drilled it into us what am I doing now I'm drilling like a dentist removing the decay so that we can put what's new and right in there are you seeing this say why do you preach on the same because this message has to be received for the church to fulfill what we're called to fulfill why it's taken 2,000 years I don't know well I do know but we're gonna get our job done well if the requiring getting our job done is to believe things about the Holy Ghost that other people aren't believing well let's get this done Luke 19 verse 13 says is one of the parables Jesus talked about it says occupy till I come occupy till I physical Jesus come well what are we occupying we're occupying this space of Jesus left us this space of fearing the Holy Ghost and working righteousness that's how we get to till he come if we don't occupy he can't come are we gonna be any good at fearing God and working righteousness when he comes he said hey I'm gonna have faith on the earth when when the Son of Man returns is there gonna be any yeah you better believe it really actually you got to believe it he that fears God and works righteousness is approved he that doesn't fear God and doesn't work righteousness is not approved are you seeing the formula here he that fears God and and works righteousness is approved of God God who God the Holy Ghost who's living in you and work righteousness why because you will be approved of God you will be an approved temple what happened in the Old Testament when when the temple was finally finished God approved of it by coming and entering in right well we're, we're a temple of God and we're looking to be approved of God so that we can fulfill everything we're called to fulfill which can't be done unless we receive and fear the Holy Ghost as God in the earth today in his rightful position and work righteousness drilling out the old and putting in the new so that the great things can come to them and they can walk in this end time far above all the tribulation that's going on in the earth right now and you shall be a precious stone unto me says the Lord in Jesus name amen Holy Ghost of God.